Hello everyone, welcome to an episode of In My Opinion. My name is John. My name is Lester. And my name is Ling Yun. Hello. Yes. And we have someone joining us today. Her name is Ling Yun. Uh, she is a friend of Lester's. And uh, why don't you do a bit of self-introduction? Tell us what you do. Hi. Um, so, okay, my name is Ling Yun. I am 23 this year. And I like singing. So, I think that's why I'm sort of an authority for today's topic. Uh-huh, like to very good. And Lester, she likes singing. But what else does she do with singing? She does my music videos because no one else I know can sing. So <laughs> she actually uh she actually was uh the one that sang the Call It What You Want cover that's on my channel, so you guys can go and check it out. Mm-hmm. She has a little cameo at the end with her very, very wonderful boyfriend as well. So you yes. can go and see that. So do you do do you do singing just as a hobby or do you do this freelance or what's the oh. gig? So I just have been singing in school settings all throughout school. And I mean, now I'm in NUS in my final year and I've been in the NUS yeah. jazz band. So I've been doing some jazz gigs here and there. And some of my friends, they have like esplanade gigs. And we just oh, wow. doing a few of that. that was that's one, a pretty big stage, right? Yeah. There was one that was supposed to happen but got cancelled for COVID. Oh, so, everything got cancelled because of yeah. COVID. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so like, uh, we have Ling Yun here today with us. Uh, the thing about it is that because she's a singer, and uh, in case it, it, it's not immediately apparent, but Alistair and I do videos. Wow, not apparent, but... <laughs> and we take photos. <laughs> yes. So, uh, <laughs> yes. What are we discussing today, Alistair? So, we are doing a topic that I feel very strongly for because I have done, mm. like, a film mod and the entire film mod, I've always been thinking about this. It's basically a yes. question about is good art sad art? Like, must it be sad for it to be good art? I think yes. this all stemmed from like this one film mod I took. And basically, it's a very artsy film mod. And the teacher is very artsy. And okay. people who took it are very artsy. And yes. I realised that when we were showcasing our work, I was the only one that was making happy films. And everyone else was talking about very sad topics like um, like depression or like things along those lines that are like hard, like yeah. darker and harsher. Then I'm the only yeah. one that's like... John was in the, this video that I made about Nintendo and about the Game Boy. So like... I was like, but did you, did you do well? I did. I got an A. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Case closed. No, it's not. No, 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 no. It's because I think I got an A because eventually I became darker to fit into the to the role. Because like I realized that everyone's doing dark films and it looks like a teacher enjoys dark films more. It's like sadder films. So I started okay. going towards their rock. In fact, Flipism is this is done. Flipism is another video on my channel. You can go and see. It's I was in it too. John was also <laughs> in it. Because John is the only actor I know. And <laughs> and so, it's also quite a dark <laughs> film. It's quite a like serious film as well. So, everything... Yes. Like, it, I kind of had to conform to that. But the entire time, I was just thinking, why must films or like art in general be sad? So, okay. Yeah, what valid, do you guys valid. think? I have a lot of opinions about this. Why don't Ling Yun, you go first? Okay. I think just to add to the mod, the mod story, yeah. last Sam, I took another mod as well. Yes. That was centered on art. And I had this question in my mind actually like last year, like this time last year. And I think like Alessa and I spoke about this like briefly. Okay. Yeah, I Thanks, Abojo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, yeah, you were saying? Yeah, like, I mean, this question is something I've been thinking about also for the past year. Because like, I think there was, I went through like a time in my life which was sadder. Mm-mm. And I feel that the stuff that I did during that time, like the songs, the recordings that I listen back to, right? I really feel like a depth to it, you know, or like something yes. that's more infectious. Whereas now, or like when I entered a happy period of my life, then yes. I thought that it was suddenly too breezy. So wait, in your in your art form of singing, right? What is what is the like concrete difference you can feel? It's just the way you sing just sounds a bit like not up to par in your in your opinion or is it like the the songs you make is just like not there emotionally i don't think it's a matter of technique yeah it's just how much you get to feel when you listen mm. to it you know okay personally i i feel that right the only reason why it is it feels that way okay is because i would say that regardless of art form right when people produce a piece of original content right be it a song be it a photograph be it a video or whatever right most of the time, these kind of things are centered around the very constant human subject. Agree? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, look at us here. Three people, right? Three humans. So, 
humans are full of emotions and most of the time there has these 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 human subjects they are they are there for to portray some kind of emotion right mm-hmm. yeah and what is what and i would say that the most common type of emotion that we experience is either neutral or neutral happy okay okay right wait neutral so ha- wait, whenever <laughs> neutral to neutral happy okay, you know people okay. be like versus be like oh yeah mm-hmm, snot snot twice out of the nose and then type lol you know <laughs> you know when you type LOL yeah, yeah, but yeah. actually it's like it's like not the not happy. really happy but semi yeah briefs out briefs out <laughs> LOL right and that's LOL already but like basically right what, I, what I'm trying to say here is that usually the darker the sadder the more negative emotions mm-hmm. are part of people's private lives and people don't typically showcase those so when they appear in content it is very novel and it is very raw and it is something that is it feels like it's in- ingrained in us to be something private and taboo but shown to everyone and then everyone will be like hey this tugs at my heartstrings because I relate even though I don't dare to admit that I may have felt the same way okay I give you an example okay let yes. me give you a concrete example there, there used to be this internet meme that goes around right talking about how Taylor Swift always uh, dates her next song <laughs> yes yeah. I believe you all heard of it it's so famous right they always see her holding hands with some new guy and be like oh look it's Taylor Swift and her, ne- and her next album yeah. right because she's very famous for after breakup producing hit songs and these mm-hmm. hit songs usually either draw to some kind of anger or some kind of emotion right yeah so this is very easy and uh, very very uh, how to say it's more obvious mm-hmm. when these kind of negative emotions as compared to the happy happy shows. But not to say you know, happier, um, less tortured movies don't do well. In fact, one of my famous, uh, one of my, my favorite filmmakers uh-huh. is very, very famous for his whimsical and uh, almost fairy tale like style. I believe you all know who I'm talking about. You wanna guess? Wes Anderson. Super famous. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but even Wes right? Anderson does themes that are like a little bit more serious, right? That is true. Serious versus versus the style that he goes for is very very slightly different. You know, he's always trying to he's always his films always spark some, some kind of joy first <laughs> okay. before you talk about the story. Okay, right, okay, and okay. I and that's where I feel that you don't necessarily have to be a tortured artist to produce art. Yeah, but I feel like while while un, okay, it's true, but the, at the same mm. time, right? There's this like so I study psychology for those people who yes. just join me. So, uh, I learned this Sam that a lot of artists or like great artists actually suffer from like bipolar disease or like depression. Yes. And a lot of mm. the great arts that they do is during the time where if you are in a bipolar episode, you are, they're actually done doing when they're in a manic episode, which is the time where like, they are a bit, basically it's the opposite of depression. They yes. like go crazy and they do whatever the hell they want. So when they paint, right, even though it looks very bizarre to everyone else, it's as if, it's actually like basically them in their manic episode and that is exactly what they see and then mm. it's great art because they actually like, you can attribute it to their mental disorder uh, which is rather I, toxic right yeah I think we have to like define what great art is because I mean I think when people see this kind of shocking art that was created in a manic episode something that has shock value right it might mm. it might be impressed just because it's shocking to them but we should like consider whether something is shocking should be great art, you know? Yes. Because okay. mm. in my in the mod that I did last time, right, the one on art, we actually um, explored different definitions of art. And I think one yes. that I really relate to is this one by Tolstoy, um, really old philosopher. Mm, mm. Okay. <laughs> Basically, what he said was, good art is art that is infectious and when he says infectious right it means that the artist's experience right is infected in the audience yeah yeah it means the audience can feel what was behind that piece of content yeah and he also goes through like four different types of um things that he considers not art and he considers Mm. his the term he uses is simulacra so it's like simulative, but it's not actually art. And like, Mm-mm. I think one of them, let me look through, like, I have like, my notes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so from what I hear, 
the I think the being able to like relate and put let the audience like put themselves in the art form or the art piece mm. is very important. Yes. It just so happens that like I can't really wrap my head around this, but the reason but every time we think of like your favorite films or your favorite songs, I don't know yes. about you guys, but for me it's like more often than not sad. Oh. Mm-hmm. Which is which like really bugs me. Because I'm like, why don't I mm-hmm. like happy stuff more? And like <laughs> And like, why is there no more popular happy stuff? Or rather, yeah. like, if let's say there's a comedy. I I I told this to John before, because John and I were in comedy in the Smart Local last in the past. Yes. And yes. I always said that comedy has always been viewed as like a lesser art form than short films or like love stories that are a little bit more serious and like sob sobby mm. and stuff like that. Mm-mm-mm. Which is kind of sad, right? I mean, because happiness is something that I would say a lot of us can all relate to but for some reason yes. happiness in a film is hits less hard than sadness in a film like I mentioned I really feel that it's because sadness is something that is a little bit more private and taboo as compared to happiness happiness is something that everybody freely admits and freely hopes to have and freely be like oh happiness everyone wants happiness everyone has happiness we're all smiling things are great you know things like that yeah. so it is it is definitely something relatable in fact it is I would say because of it being majority of most people's experience in their daily lives mm-hmm. right it's not something that people typically appreciate when it's put into a into a medium into a view- viewable or, or consumable medium. So like, for example, what is one thing that people don't typically see? Let me give you an example. If you want to talk about depression, for example, right? Yeah. So depression being a topic for a lot of films is something that people always try to do to raise awareness. Yeah. It's never because there's a popular majority that has depression. Mm. Okay. Right? Yeah. So as a result of that, right, people who don't know, people want to see the novel. Mm. I don't have depression. I don't know what's it like. But I would like to see through an, how an artist portrays racism, how an po- uh, artist portrays depression, you know, things like that. Okay. And that has novel value. It's like the indie hit value that, that a happy film may not necessarily have. I get what I mean. Okay. Yeah. And but this is just films, right? There yeah. are lots of different ways that we can express art forms. You know, mm. so like, I'll give you an example like why there was a time okay I, I, I remember this very fondly because I used to participate and, uh, t- and take a look at a lot of photo contests yeah okay so there was a time where, where there was this particular I believe it, I don't know if it's Reuters or AP okay uh, they did a little bit of a, of a photo contest and they said no war photos oh no war photos and right. was one it? one reason that they cited was purely on the ground of ethics. Yeah. But at the same time, right, I feel that it is also good because it levels the playing field a little bit more. Okay. War photos are novel and hard to come by. And like Lingrin mentioned earlier, excuse me, there's a little bit of a shock value right there because it's not something that you typically see. Yeah. And they actually put on a really, really emotive picture within that contest and a, a war uh, basically it's a mother and a child ducking for cover as the war next to them essentially exploded into dust and and, and stuff like that yeah. right so one they cited that they cited that they don't want it because of on the grounds of ethics yeah right but they mentioned about the other thing which is where a lot of these kind of conflict zone photos have been submitted already okay so people get it people get that these novel things right and these kind of private taboo things are what uh, you will feel the most when you see. Mm. As compared to another very famous photographer who also essentially from history books invented the 35mm film photography. His name is Henri Cartier-Bresson. Yes. He is very good at capturing street. random day-to-day things. Street photography. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's the most famous street photographer. But the thing about it is that there is no there is no uh, how to say negative emotion element to most of his photographs. Yeah, it's His just photographs are impressive because you're able to relate to that instant in that moment of whatever is happening. Mm. And that whole thing told the story and that is the mark of a true master because you don't need the exploding concrete next to a mother and child exposing their plight. Because yeah. if you are able to catch a scene like that, a, a, a sad scene like that or a tragic scene like that, right, the scene has done the lifting for you. Okay. Right? And this, and, and I'm not saying it's, it's wrong to, 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 catch, to catch these kind of scenes. But it's just that like why there is a skill towards this is because as humans, we 
tend to appreciate the taboo, tend to appreciate the novel a little bit more. I get what I mean. And I think that's, that's, that, I mean, that's my take on it. Okay. So you know, like, going back to the Tolstoy thing, right? I said there yeah. were four types of simulator that he doesn't consider art. One of them yes. is the shock value yes. kind of art. The art, because he thinks that that kind of art, right, when you see it, all you get is a, a feeling is immediately evoked, but it's not Mm-mm. genuine. Like, it's not something you can relate to. It's just something that shocks you. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I'm actually inclined to agree with him that that kind of thing should not really be considered art because mm. what is the artist communicating other than, like, yeah. surprise, you know? Yeah. So what are the other three that you say? Like, other three not art things? So, referring Please to hold as notes, she refers to her notes. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the first one is borrowed material. Which is, I mean, quite plagiarism. Yeah. Plagiarism, yeah. 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 Which we did an episode about last week, so please. yeah, please check it out in the description box below. Yes. <laughs> yes. Continue. The second one is imitation. So like hyper realistic paintings, drawings, because he oh. thinks that yeah, he thinks that the superfluity of details disrupts the reflection of the feelings. Huh. Okay. So like you are just attracted by how detailed it is. Okay. Mm. Right, okay. I can see where he's, where he's coming from. Yeah. Then the third one was the um, strikingness, the one that I just talked about. Okay. The shock value. Yeah. Yes. And the fourth one is um, diversion and intellectual interest, which is, you know, there are those kinds of art forms that incorporate a puzzle, you know, like choose your own adventure or like figure <laughs> mm. out the riddle. Flippism. Uh. It's like flippism. Yeah, continue. Yeah, never mind. yeah but anyway, what his point is that um, when people see that kind of view that kind of art right what they are doing is actually engaging their intellectual like side like their brain to figure yes. out what it's talking about and that is right, not right. art because there's no feeling that's being infected in the audience apart from like question marks in their mind oh, mm-hmm. okay that makes sense mm. okay yeah but going back to the main topic about like set art and everything I think the yeah. big problem the reason why I built, brought this up is because I see a lot of artists or like writers or like singers or whatever, they all have, let's say they, if they are going through a sad phase or like a depressive phase, they're all very scared. Or like Taylor Swift going through a breakup. Correct. They all are very scared to come out of it because they feel like without it. I feel like that's, that's when they're most creative, is it? Yeah, because they feel like they to be oh. creative, they, are, they have to be depressed. Or when they create, they are, they are only creative when they're sad. Then because of that, they don't let themselves heal or they don't... Like, basically, they make themselves go through the torture artist path. That's that's very warped. Yeah, let but me, it's such me, a big thing, right? Yeah. Let, would, let me just find this quote by Neil. You all know who's Neil Gaiman? No. Not really. Neil Gaiman is a really famous uh, artist, okay? So, so he is uh, famous for... for, for I I, I let, let, why is he why is he best known for? Let me just go to Google. Okay, so yeah. so he's good at writing his novels, and he's very famous for creating uh this quote called "Make good art." Let me just explain oh. to you why this is important. Yeah. Okay, and I feel that and this will this will uh add on to the point about why I feel that you know when people are upset, right? or like they are depressed or whatever, then they feel that they're most creative and they don't want to come out from that phase and I feel that that's very warped. Let me explain to you why. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he actually once uh, uh, quoted this and I'm just going to read the full quote out to you. It's rather long, but I think it's a speech and I think Neil Gaiman is somebody that a lot of people will recognize and should respect. So sometimes life is hard, things go wrong in life and in business, blah, blah, blah. When things get tough, this is what you should do. Make good art. Okay, then he gives yeah. a few examples on how uh, it's not uh, you, 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 should, you should use the motivation to make good art, but you shouldn't like, necessarily stay in it because your circumstance does not matter. Husband runs off with a politician, make good art. Leg crushed and then eaten by a mutated boa constrictor, make good art. IRS on your trail, make good art. Cat exploded, make good art. Someone on the internet think that you're doing, what you're doing is stupid or evil or it's been done before, Make good art. Do what only you can do best and make good art. So this is where, where I feel that uh, your what he's trying to say here, right? It's not necessarily that if you're in a negative circumstance, right? That's the only time when you're the most creative. Mm. If you are an artist, right? You make art 
regardless of circumstance. And your circumstance can inspire you, but it ought not to be your cage. Okay. Yeah. Mm. You, you, ca- you get where I'm going with this, right? Yes. Mm. I yeah. agree. So, so like, yeah, lor? And I feel that like this is very, very apt, especially if you talk about torture artists, because yes, there are definitely a lot of very successful torture artists. In fact, one of my one of my uh there's this painter that I really, really like. I don't know if you've heard of Frida Kahlo before. You know Frida Kahlo? I, I don't. Mm-hmm. She's very yeah. famous for the broken column. You all know the broken column? Okay. Let no. me tell you the story about the broken column. Okay? Yes. So Frida Kahlo is a is a okay, she's the most famous lady with a unibrow, basically. Yeah. The painter lady <laughs> with a unibrow. <laughs> Yeah, that's the most famous thing about her. But like, but like one of her f- most famous portraits, or rather self-portraits, okay, is called The Broken Column. You can go and Google that right now, okay? And basically, she documents her whole life and how uh, she suffers physical pain throughout her entire life up to her death. Mm-hmm. And The Broken Column was, was about herself uh, and about how she's broken inside. Yeah, okay. And mm-hmm. I feel that that is also one of the... It is the peak of the tortured artist because she painted her physical condition it into art. Yeah. And it's very famous, this broken column. Mm. So I think she's one of the most famous tortured artists that you find. Yeah. Right? Okay. But the thing about, about Frida Kahlo is that like, yes, she's a tortured artist because she lived her life in pain and she used that pain to make the art. Yeah. Right? Not everyone lives a life that is constant pain. As like, right? I mean, it's a good thing if you don't actually. <laughs> yes. So if yeah. the constant pain inspires you, you ought not to want to stay in constant pain, right? If yeah. you are a truly good artist, you will pain your day-to-day life to the same success of Frida Kahlo, but the only difference is yours had less pain. Mm. Yeah, you shouldn't have and to be and, yes. stuck in pain. And there's mm. so many things around you that, inspi- that can inspire you. Yeah. And I feel that people always neglect that. Yes, correct. Yeah. I think yeah. I have this other quote. Um, basically, uh, I think a lot of people who are... This is for film. Uh, this is not for any other yes. art form, but this is for film. I think one of the biggest like problems with a lot of people's films, especially when they're first starting out, is that they... I think I told you this before. They, mis, they mistake their own experiences for film, for cinema. Ah, so okay, like, okay. they script their own life. And then when it doesn't turn out good, when the film doesn't turn out good, they, then they're like, wait, but it happened to me. It should be good. That's not yeah. the point. That's okay, not that, the point. That, that one is also a bit warped, right? Yeah. That's also a bit warped. I think that's a very big misconception, especially those people who, I mean, I went through it before, like with my whole anxiety mm. problem or like heartbreaks or whatever. I'll yeah. script it as it is. I'll script my life as it is. And then mm. when it doesn't t- turn out good or I think it's good, but actually it's not, then I'll be like, why is it not turning out good? Because the whole mentality of your experiences is cinema or your experiences is your art form is a warped concept to begin with. You can't yes. mistake that. You have to take your experiences as inspiration and then add on to make it your art form. It's not mm. purely just it. I'm not very sure whether I agree with that. Because I think like when you make mm. art, right, it yeah. should be sincere. Yeah. And it should come from your experiences first. Then mm. you try to like get the audience to feel what you felt, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I see, I'm I, saying that like, it shouldn't be exactly what it is. Like your, I don't know, okay, I don't know about music or any other art form, but like for film, if something happened to you, let's say your cat exploded. Wow. <laughs> or your cat, Tragic. nice. Good quote right there. <laughs> let's say your cat exploded. Yeah. A, a good artist will be able to um, make a story or a film that ends up with the cat being exploded and the same emotions but not showing the same experiences as your as your own. You should be able mm. to add on to it and yeah. not just take whatever your experience is as it is. Yes. So whatever sadness, even so like to extrapolate that, like let's say you are feeling mild sadness, you should be able mm. to take that and be able to extrapolate it to a bigger, wider, like more like a better problem or like a better question to ask your your audience. So essentially what you're saying is like instead of just reporting yeah. on your situation, you ought to use it as inspiration instead. Like a, a, Basically. a, like a springboard for reflection and then right, based right. on that your art form. So okay. that's why like you don't exactly, that's why I'm a very big advocate of like you don't exactly need to go through the problems to be able to 
write about them or like mm. script about them or s- I will say sing about them, but Ting Ying can come in. Yes. <laughs> I guess you need empathy, you know? Mm. I mean, yes. that's for singing at least. Like for music, you kind of, because when you sing other people's songs, right? Like for example, in the jazz, the jazz tradition, all we, okay, not all we do, but like <laughs> most of the time, we sing standards. And these are mm. old songs that have been passed down for decades. And what the first thing we have to do, like before we start singing it, right, is try to figure out like where the song comes from. And that's what all my instructors have been drilling in me. It's like, it's empathy, I guess. Like, you don't have to live it, mm. but you have to empathize with the person who is, the persona that's singing it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's how it is for, like, the but, music. But there's no requirement for it to be a sad persona, right? Yeah, there's no requirement. Mm. And the thing is, like, if you sing without the person, without feeling it, right, it's very obvious. Because I think, especially when it's voiced, it's a, like it's something that we hear all the time, right? It, you're very familiar and you know how to differentiate when someone is being sincere or not in their mm. speech. So like it comes through very clearly when someone is singing like dead pen without feeling anything. It's just delivering it, right? Instead yeah. of just yeah. Another thing is that one thing I learned from positive psychology as well is that the reason why a lot of people go for sad art or like they like to watch art that makes them sad is because it evokes a lot of empathy. So like going along the Green's point, it evokes a lot of empathy. And um, one of the, one of, for, based on positive psychology, one of the, um, the factors to having a very, to ha- leading a happy life is actually altruism and based on that also empathy and empathy for other people's right. problems. So when okay. you are able to feel someone else's sadness, it actually feels better for you as warped as that sounds. Basically, that's what they are trying to say. Uh. So when you, when you are watching like, uh, soldiers coming home for the first time or like for after a long time or like seeing a sad film mm. when you're evoking empathy it feels good for you and that's yeah, why I don't think it's warped is it it's not warped okay I don't think it's warped it's like a yeah, little bit paradoxical it's, it's a bit paradoxical because most of the time mm. when you say like when you watch a sad film you're supposed to feel sad but more often than not when you watch a sad film you're actually like kind of feeding to yourself and like making yourself feel I guess happy because you're evoking empathy yeah I think you're making yourself more fulfilled. Yeah, more might fulfilled. be the better way of putting it. Maybe, fulfilled. Maybe. I, guess I think so. it's just connection. You know, you, know? you just feel like yeah. when someone out there gets it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ask if we cry? Gonna, yeah, when you watch like these kind of films, like or like, do you who only cried? cry? Do you only cry when you watch sad stuff, or do you also cry when you watch other things? No, I watch a. I actually, actually, this is a very good question because. Uh, when it comes to films, right? I'm, uh, I'm, I cry very easily. I'm, a, I'm a crybaby. I'm, I'm very weak one. But like, but like, there are certain moments. There are three powerful moments that I remember in film that I always, even if I rewatch now, I will cry. Yes. Okay. So the very first one. Okay. This is, this is gonna. Maybe you can help me break it down, right? So the very first one that I can always recall, right, is uh, you all know the. Have, have you all heard of this Korean movie called Along with the Gods? Sounds familiar. Yes. If you all haven't, I didn't go and watch check it, it out. But yeah, okay. Okay. my mom loves it. Yes. So the ending scene where there's this uh the basically the connection between the mother and the son and stuff like that, right? That was one that got me very emotional. Okay. Because it's something that I believe everyone can relate to. Mm. Mm. I mean, okay. you won't exist if you don't have a mother, right? <laughs> okay. Mm. Then next is Next is another one that's very, very famous that I always remember. I don't know if y'all remember this. It's a very old movie. It's called The Prince of Egypt. Yeah, I, I watched that so many times. Like over I watched over it so again. many times. But let me tell you the scene that gets me. And this is where... Maybe we just use these two examples. This second example, this is where it gets uh, a little bit more complicated. Okay? Mm. So, Ling you might know. But the burning bush scene. Uh-huh. No matter how many times I watch it, even if I play it on YouTube right now, I will cry. <laughs> Okay, I don't really know why you cry at this yes. point. Yes, so, so because that evokes a very powerful emotion within me. You know, yeah. it makes me feel small. It makes me feel that there is a creator that I, I follow and it makes me view religion more strongly again. Mm. Mm. Right? And it's very epic. Yeah. <laughs> so it's things like this. You see, this is where I feel that once again, there is no need for a negative emotion. In fact, yeah. this is a super positive one. Yeah. And like, I think we have to like clarify that crying doesn't mean you feel sad, you know? Mm. Like, just like overwhelmed. Yeah, 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 just yeah. overwhelmed. So I feel like when you're actually 
so overwhelmed with feeling right that you're crying it's actually a sign that you have really been like in like touched by the artist you know okay i get what you mean i think yeah i realized now that i think about it when you ask the how often do you cry as in first of all quite often but <laughs> <laughs> when i watch <laughs> when, when i watch films uh, i realized that i cry a lot not during the sad parts eh. i cry a lot during the happy parts Mm. And which, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, that's kind of true. Why? I cry a lot during the extremely happy moments. I cry when, like, do you know, like, okay, so I watch American football, and, okay. like, every time a team wins the Super Bowl. Are you going to cry at American football? No, when every time a team wins the Super Bowl, right, or like they win an important game. I, right? I believe we're talking about different types of films here. No, different types <laughs> of films. No, I'm, I'm talking, I'm ta- no, 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 it's basically okay, okay, like no, yeah, general. Let's see. In general, when I mm. like when I when I see like them winning, right, I'll like cry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, because there's a very powerful emotion yeah. tied to that. It's like it's quite quite similar to the one I mentioned about the burning bush, right? These are not easy to identify emotions. Yours mm. could be a sense of victory. Yeah. Mine could be I uh, I can't find a better word for it other than religious zeal. Mm. I, I don't know. You know, it's something like that that that, that strikes a, a strong emotion within you. So I would right. say that like, and like it's very easy to make someone cry with a sad scene. I say, okay, it's, mm. it sounds a lot more logical to make someone cry with a sad scene. But I think what a good artist will be able to do with their art form is to make someone cry without that. Like yeah. Yeah. being o- able to relate to the person, your audience so much or like overwhelm the person with so much emotions without making it sad. Like if happiness yes. or like a theme or like a message that is so like which strikes the audience so much that they actually mm. like Cry, uh. mm. So maybe that's like, like a shift mm. in perspective that the art, like the artist or like the art scene, should be moving more yeah. towards. Yeah. Mm. So if you, if you I mean, I, let me just quote my third example, just so that you're, right. uh, yeah, you heard of the Bollywood film Three Idiots. Yes. 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 So towards the end, right when there's a big reveal and everyone comes together to to find Rancho again. Yes. Right. It was a very victorious moment. Of a Rex to riches kind of story. Mm-hmm. Right, and that gets me emotional all the time. Yes. Mm. So I feel that like what we're trying to say here is that you don't really require the tortured artist to produce uh, uh, good art. Good art is something that can overwhelm you with the emotion regardless of medium. Mm. Like we've all seen videos of, of those judges that are crying to people's songs. And stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. We've seen uh people uh lose themselves to particularly emotive photographs. We've seen people mm-hmm. uh get really obsessed with paintings, you know? So it doesn't matter what the medium is. And and because of that, right, I feel that it doesn't matter what the art what the what the tone of the art form is as well. Lah. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So you don't have to be that tortured artist. I agree. Yeah, is there anything you want? I feel that this 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 whole episode, right, is me being agitated and excited because this is something that's important to me. Yeah. What yeah, do y'all think? Important to all of us, yeah. Yeah. But it's something I struggle with also. Like I'm going through my whole anxiety thing and like I made a lot of films about depression and um mental illness. And a, a lot of mm. I've f- ever since I have like known about Wong Fu. And Ling Yun was, okay, fun fact, trivia. Ling Yun and I wanted to make a YouTube channel together when we were 16. And oh, yeah, okay, both you. <laughs> <laughs> I scripted like lots of love stories that were all tragic. <laughs> and they yes. sucked. <laughs> it was so bad. But it's just something that I feel very strongly for. Because like, I've always thought that you need to go through sad shit to make good stuff. But mm. like, only as I'm making more stuff that I realise that actually it's if I can make something that is uh, relatable and not sad, right? That will be like, mm. that will be like I made that's like my mark of I made it as an artist. When people will be able to yeah. like, hear look at my stuff and like go like, Okay, your stuff is good, but it's not a sad film in general. I wanna sh- I wanna share that like I think for me, like my journey from twenty uh, like last 2018 and 2019, right? It was me wondering, mm. like, oh, like, why can't, why doesn't the stuff I make, like, make 
like feel as strongly anymore. Like when I transition from mm. like sad stuff to happy stuff, like why doesn't it like hit people anymore? That was like one of the bigger things I was struggling with. But then like as I moved into this year, right, like from nine, 2019 or 2020, like the question became like, like the further question became, um, if I have nothing to say, is that something to say as well? That's you an know? interesting question. Like in what yeah, way? Like, I struggled for a bit like with thinking like if I don't feel anything particularly strongly at the moment, does that mean I have nothing to say? But what if like me being in that state itself is a statement, you know? Okay. That's a nice way to end it actually. That's a very mm. sweet sentiment. Maybe 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 we could all leave a little bit for like one or two sentences for aspiring artists it's because I believe this is something that people may start to think about especially when they start out and they haven't properly solidified their identity and what they want to do mm. what do you all have to say to these people uh, for me I would say um, I would say just make art that you feel strongly for and mm. like whether it's sad or happy eventually if you're good enough at it people will be able to relate and because you're genuine, people will be able to feel it. Like people can people can sense when you're not being genuine. So I'll say that's the most important thing. Just be genuine. And eventually mm. you'll be able to find your corner or the people who like your stuff. And that's all that should matter. Lah. It shouldn't be trying to pander to a audience or like pander to what society thinks is good art. Yeah. Mm. To add on to that, I think like you have to respect your own journey. Like you don't need to like start from point zero and then try to be point ten you know you gotta like go stepwise and incrementally not you can't just jump okay very good uh for me i just want to i just want to say that i feel that yes it is important to consider what your audience wants but you must remember that when you most of the time when you create art it is most of, more often than not your own voice created based on yourself and most importantly you must remember to create it for yourself mm. You know, you cannot just like what Alastair mentioned. Try to try to uh, create something just for the sake of popularity. Yeah, you will not. End that will make you most, miserable. The most You're important really thing is like be sincere. That's like if it's yes. just one word. Yeah. Yes. There you go. All right. <laughs> so we have come to the end of today's episode. Yes. Today was fun. It was. Today was noisy but fun. We actually managed yes. to talk quite a lot. I didn't think that we would be able to talk so much about good art and. Mm. There's so much to say. <laughs> there is so much to say. In fact, if you like this episode, you can always tell us more in the comments. And uh, yeah, if you want Lingrin back, Lingrin on this side for me, uh, we can always have her back. And then uh, we'll just let you know how she sings. And then uh, maybe next time we can have her sing in, uh, on our episode. Yes. Live uh, stream. I don't know. Alastair, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for Bye. watching. Bye. Yes. Bye-bye.